Welcome back to the Ultimate Pool Champions League live on your Monday nights. Carl Morris taking on Danny Eaton Lees in a battle of the two victors from round number one. Winner of this match is in the box seat for Champions League round two qualification. Steve James and Simon Webb with you as always. And Qualification, yes, but they would also be in a brand new group as well. That's how the draw works. This is week number five, so they'd be the first one into group two in the second stage. Our uh, first group has already been set, and, and how. Yeah, that's some group, isn't it? <laughs> Shane Thompson, Jack Whelan, Chris Melling, just Tom Cousins. Just name after name after name in that first group. Golden break, third of the night. Wowie, Carl Morris. <laughs> now I'll be totally honest, I thought Carl Morris was going to be a bit of a celebrator. Yeah, I was expecting the same, but sheepishly apologises. Just give us, give us something, Carl. I'm going to need Goobsy to be down here giving celebration lessons to these ultimate pool professionals. Yeah, and, and Deej. Deej is a good one for the team. Yeah. He gave us a big one, but yeah. Well, 1 0 Carl very, very quickly. Start. But what a break it has to be said. He caught this break well. Well, I say he caught this break well. Look at the spin on the white. He didn't catch it perfectly. Second frame. Danny and Lees to break. A wry smile Frank from Carl Morris. Danny and Lees has had a golden break as well. He knows how it feels. Cool. Sounds like a gun's gone off in the arena when Dan breaks. Oh, he hits him hard, doesn't he? These reds are perfect, but a tricky opening red. It could go yellows. Yellows a lot more work at the bottom end of the table. It could go yellows, but if he takes on a red and he pots it and gets on the next ball, the reds are just sitting there as easy as they possibly could be. Yeah, opening red is really tricky. Do you take the little little tickle into the left middle? Yeah, I think you have to, but you've also got to play a cue ball here as well. Probably screwing it on and off the top cushions. We play this with a little bit of pace. Oh, there's confidence. A little That's bit. A shot. Slams it in. In fact, he overhits it. That is a really good shot. If you're anything else other than absolutely perfect on that shot, that, that doesn't go in. Exactly. And he was perfect. And now they are just sitting there almost like a practice routine for him. Really simple. Just, you know, the term dot to dot gets used a lot. This is absolutely dot to dot. You could play every shot from the one he's just played onwards as just drop-in shots. Or he can play them as stun shots, but the same difference is every single shot's going to be dead straight. Nice work if you can get it. It's going to be a quick go fire back from... Danny and Lees. Yeah, it may not be that first shot. They were unmissable. Yeah, it may not go down as a golden break, but it was a one-shot frame. Really, make that shot in the middle pocket. You're going to win the frame. And it was some shot. <laughs> it was not easy. He punched it in from that angle. And you know, I think make a shot like that, he deserves to win a frame. And Danny and Lees done just that. Yeah, and there was pressure on that shot as well. Golden break from Carl put pressure on it because you're taking on the shot in the middle and, you know, it's your first real shot on the match. Obviously, he's had the break. And if you miss it, you know you're going to lose the frame because the, the reds were so laid out, you know, perfectly. They put all the pressure on it and he didn't just, you know, drop it in and make sure of it and then chase another difficult ball. He went, no, this is it. Make this shot and win the frame. And he did. And credit to him. Yeah, big time finish from Dan Eaton Lees. Carl Morris back on the break. Golden break, last time out. Oh, that. 
that's tough. That is tough. What's the cue ball here? I think he, I mean, he catches that perfectly straight up and down, kicked off the top rail, all the way down the bottom left, and nudged into the bottom left corner. That's it, unlucky. It is unlucky. It's very unlucky going off because you've got the cue ball going up the middle of the table. But I feel like the same when we saw the replay of the golden break as well. He's catching the catching the break with a lot of side. Even though he's caught the front ball square on, he's still got a lot of side on that uh, that cue ball. You're not telling me he deserved to go in off. Like oh, no, 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 no. Far, <laughs> far from it. You know, you get the cue ball. You can you catch that front ball square, and you get the cue ball going straight in the middle of the table. You go in off. That's very unfortunate. But well, I think what I'm just saying is he's not flushing, absolutely flushing the break. He's he's coming across it a little bit. So key here for D E L is landing on that red to the top left. Oh, looks like he wants to play a little cannon on the yellow. That's what he was just pointing at. It would really help him, actually, because... Oh, at the end, he changed, oh, he's changed his mind and yes. went for the, off the cushion and caught the red. I which thought he was going to cannon the yellow out, play red onto... And then the red at the top left would, would work out as a nice connector, but actually he's gone slightly the other way. And oh, he's still on this red to the top left. It's thin, though. Is he going to try and reroute somewhere else? Yeah, look for a second like he was going to try and clip the one he's nearest to back, but this looks like the obvious shot. It is thin, but if you make it, you've still got a chance. Oh, he's gone for the double, and he's made it. Oh, he missed it. He did play it in that back pocket as well, I think. Wow. wow -y. I mean, he's nearly played an amazing shot. But that is a despicable fluke. Yeah, that wasn't one where... Oh, I, I don't think he was playing the double and he nearly made the, the cocked hat in the left centre. Just going on his body language the minute he struck that watching the ball. I'm pretty sure that's as played up until the fact it hit the jaw and went in the bottom corner. So it is a huge fluke, but a, a great choice of shot. I, you have to say, he's so close to making it. Carl Morris will be spitting feathers. Well, you saw his reaction. Oh. Look to the skies. After going in off the break like he did, and then Dan pulling that out the bag. Oh. <laughs> he sat there fizzing. I wonder how he feels now about <laughs> apologising for the golden break. <laughs> yeah. going to have to get... Mick Hill on the line, figure out what on earth Carl's done to, to the pool <laughs> gods to deserve this. <laughs> He's still shaking. <laughs> Danny and Lees, brilliant finish in the end. I mean, he's nearly played a fantastic shot there. It is really worth pointing out. That's amazing vision. But that's a, uh, even to get the last second drop in as well, that is, that's a, that's a <laughs> <He's> dirty <laughs> fluke. Absolutely no right to be anywhere near that pocket. That's the sort of thing you hold your hands up for, folks. Not, not a cold break. <laughs> yeah, and he did, to be fair. Yeah, he, he did. absolutely did, yeah. And so he should. <laughs> I'd have found it mildly amusing if he hadn't, with Cole having held his up for the golden break. Oh, can he rub salt into the wounds and make one of his own here? He is absolutely... Oh, oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Danny to Lee's... <laughs> it's done a golden break. Watch Carl Morris's reaction here. All eyes on the eight ball, then watch the top left of your screen. <laughs> oh, that's tremendous, you've got to say. Oh, he'd be a pool player. The first thing you have to say, though, that, that was an absolutely huge break once again. Dan Eaton Lees is absolutely crunching his break. Is, is Carl Morris snapping his cue? What's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> He's waving the white flag. <laughs> oh, sometimes it's just not meant to be your night.
Oh, that's incredible. What a game. Well, with all the golden breaks and all the, the joking aside, Carl Morris has time to get back in this match because there's still 10 minutes left. We still have half the match to go. Golden duck. Oh, <laughs> could you imagine? <laughs> Yeah, still plenty of time on the watch. Eight ball is in motion. He's left himself, I mean, he's hit those so well, but all the balls in a line on the left side of the table. This is a strange split. Not often they come out like this. And, well, we said at the start of the night, that you never quite know what you're going to get with Carl Morris. You usually get entertainment. We've been thoroughly entertained here. But usually it's something he's doing rather than having been done to him. Yeah, it is always entertaining. Something always happens when Carl's in town, that is for sure. There's still serious business out there for these players. Carl still has a, a match to win, even if he was just to try and get back to 3-3, to three, three, even if it took a few minutes to manage to get that point and get a draw. Although you'd feel there's enough time for a victory for him here. Problem he's got, even though he hit a good break, he did not get a good leave. These balls are not nice for him. Trying to make it happen, and I uh, sort of threw the cue at it, really. Trying to make it happen rather than trying to do anything more than with control. And it hasn't really worked out for him. Yellow hasn't moved. Red went in. And now Carl is not really got much of a chance of a finish. So he's still going to chase one. He was hoping to be on this yellow to the bottom left corner with a way of being able to cannon into the red and yellow together, but I think he's going to be throwing just a fraction too wide. I'm not sure if he can get enough right-hand side and get it off the bottom cushion. He can. Great shot. Oh, that's terrific he, shot. he was absolutely perfect on that for that shot. Excellent. Let's have a look at this yellow by the two reds. He's looking to try and play this off the red into the middle. Is that what you're looking at? Yeah, I don't think he has that much choice. I don't think he can get on it any better than that. He could probably top, top cushion and go into it, but chances of trying to develop it slim. This is, I mean, this is your final ball is tough. It is makeable, though. It's just pick that right point on the, the red. It doesn't have to think about the cue ball at all. It doesn't have to worry about where the red's going. It won't get in the way of the cue ball. Just about making this shot. Eight ball will be waiting. Oh, brilliant shot. Brilliant shot. Houdini Morris with a fantastic clearance. <laughs> and that really was a fantastic clearance. I said after a couple of shots, he didn't really have a finish on, but great pot to the top left-hand corner and then an excellent developing shot. And an excellent last ball as well. That was high class and a great response to a couple of things going against him. You just never quite know what you're going to get with Carl Morris. You can have brilliance, you can have madness. That was brilliant. And actually from Dan Eaton Lee's side of the table, he doesn't really want to get dragged into what Carl's doing, as entertaining as it is. He wants to just stay in his own zone here and, and just focus on the job in hand, which is winning one more frame. What a break again. It's, oh, it's a cannon. It's, it's an absolute cannon. That is as flush as you can hit them. Bang. Look at the split he's left as well. Yeah, this is just there for him. The only ball 
near a cushion that's half awkward is the eight ball. The rest are just laid out perfectly for him. Ideally, I'd want to leave the, the red that he's now looking at, the one to the right centre, the one he's about to play is my last ball. I'd love to be where he is now for the end of the visit, but he's going to go a different way. Probably felt he couldn't get a route to do that. It's not the end of the world because there's no traffic in the way for the eight ball. There's no yellows in the way. He just needs to get somewhere across for it down the cushion, back his potting ability from there. 15 second shot clock coming in after this shot. Dan Eaton Lee is hoping not to have to use much of it. He's in the driving seat. See a little shake of the head from Carl in the top left of your picture. I think he thinks this is over. But we should know better having watched Carl Morris on our screens for last year. It never quite is over until it's over. Yeah, and as long as that eight ball's on the cushion, he still has to land on it. So there is still a glimmer. A small glimmer of hope here for Carl Morris. If he takes the one to the bottom left, he is going to be awkward queuing. He's going to go the other way. I don't think this is a good angle to get across for the eight ball, so has he decided to play double? He does have enough angle to force it across, but I would have wanted a shade more. But these super fine cloths, you can really generate a lot of angle from from there. That's a brilliant shot. I absolutely agree. He looked almost straight on that shot, but powered it all the way across the table. Brilliant match, thoroughly entertaining between two fantastic players. Danny and Lees is in the box seat, just needs to avoid defeat. Is it the end of the night? It will Carl Morris be waving that white flag a little bit later, I wonder.